There's a lot of debate circulating around Capitol Hill, some of it happening thousands of miles away from there. The U.S. Senate is conducting its business in Washington, D.C., but the House of Representatives is doing a lot of work remotely with members of Congress at home. Both branches of Congress are considering what to do about another stimulus package. Democrats passed a $3 trillion bill in the House last month that would send another round of direct payments to Americans based on income. Senate Republicans have been reluctant to act so far. A hot button issue getting attention from Democrats and Republicans is police reform. It's an immediate response to the death of George Floyd. Activists have been pushing change for years regarding the mistreatment of minorities. Now let's compare the plans from House Democrats, Senate Republicans, and the President's executive order this week. Democrats call for banning the use of police chokeholds. The Senate and President would provide incentives for banning the technique. Democrats would limit qualified immunity. And that prevents officers from being sued for misconduct. The Senate and the President maintain qualified immunity. The Democrats would also create a national registry for police misconduct to track officers. The Senate and the President's plan stops short of that and promotes information sharing to keep troubled officers from moving from department to department. It's certainly a wild last year in office for Iowa Congressman Dave Loebsack. We talked about these issues in a conversation earlier this week. Well, Congressman, police reform, now the hot topic for Democrats and Republicans on Capitol Hill. Each party put forth plans that are significantly different. They differ on the approach to chokeholds and qualified immunity, for example. Given these wide differences, why should Americans expect anything different than another still made on Capitol Hill on this issue? Well, that's a great question, Jim. Um, look, I think that the country is ready for reform. Uh, there's no question that this movement has touched a chord. Uh, among the American people, not everyone, but I think the vast majority. Again, I want to make sure, and I have talked to the law enforcement folks in recent weeks, I want to make sure that, that they know and that the country knows that, you know, look, the vast majority of our law enforcement folks are good people. They want to do the right thing. They want to protect us. They want to do it in the right way. But we do have systemic problems. There's no question. And I think most, if not many of them, many if not most of them would, would, would agree with that and they would like to see reforms as well. Um, I think that the intent uh, behind what the Senate is trying to do and what the House is trying to do is largely the same. It's just a question of difference in terms of how we get there. The administration is on board too in terms of reforming the system. So I don't want, again, as always, I don't want to be a Pollyanna about this. I, I hate to make predictions, but I, I think we're in a good place where we can come together and, and really get some meaningful reforms through. I, I, I believe we're gonna be able to do that. There's a lot of rhetoric about funding police. Even the Republicans threatened to withhold federal funding for departments that use chokeholds. That's sort of an incentive. There's the argument we've heard to defund the police from some activists on the left who are promoting that. How much can the threat of losing money force real change in police agencies? Yeah, the idea of defunding, uh, if you take that word literally, um, uh, it would be the wrong thing to do. Um, I think what most folks are referring to is somehow reforming the system, transforming uh, the way police do their jobs, uh, the jobs that they do, uh, reimagining that, if you will. And I think that makes a lot of sense because when all this started to happen uh, and, and people were talking about exactly that, transforming what the police do, I have had so many conversations when I do my ride-alongs with police about all the things that they have to do that they're really not prepared to do, to deal with mental health situations, for example. Um, they're not trained for that. That's not something that we ought to subject them to and put them in that, in that situation. So we need, I think, to make sure that we have enough resources for these things that the police do that they don't even want to do because they're not trained for that. And so we do have to take a very, very a significant look at what our police do now, what we're asking them to do, and then the kinds of things that perhaps they shouldn't be doing that we ought to be doing in other ways. And that's the kind of thing that we're talking about. And I think police would largely agree with that as well. They have told me that in the past when I've done my ride-alongs with them. They say to me, Congressman, we're not counselors. We're not trained and nor we should be to do these kinds of things. And so that's going to take a long, hard look to make sure that we do it the right way. But that's the kind of thing we're talking about. And I, and I think that makes a lot of sense. Well, you have steered me towards my next question because there is the argument that they're not doing what they're trained to do initially. So when you talk about taking those responsibilities away, you'd also certainly have to take some money away from police and allocate that to agencies that do specialize in the areas that traditionally aren't supposed to be done by police, right? 
I think we have to be very careful about that. I think we have to take a long, hard look. Again, we don't as Congress. This is a local obligation. This is what our local authorities do. And they're, and they're doing that throughout, throughout Iowa and throughout the country as we speak. But take a long, hard look at where that money is going, for what purposes, and all the rest. It may be that police departments are not going to see a significant decrease in their funding if it turns out that the things that we want them to do still cost a lot of money. It may be that we simply add more funds for other things and other services that other folks who are not the police are going to do. And this is something, again, that a lot of us have had conversations about with local law enforcement and local social, social service agencies for a long time. And it makes a lot of sense. So we've got to figure this out. Local governments have to have, a, as I said, they got to take a long, hard look at the priorities um, of those police departments, how much it costs to... Uh, to, to fulfill the obligations that they identify as necessary obligations. And then where it's other agencies that have to do the job and need the funding, then we're gonna to have to come up with that funding. Now the federal government can help on that front. We can help with funding just as we have in the past, but it's gonna take some time to have those conversations and figure out where that money needs to go. Part of my conversation with Iowa Congressman Dave Loebsack. Now our question of the week. What changes do you think need to be made by police departments to ensure fair treatment of everyone? Send your answer by email to for the record at whbf.com or respond to this post on Facebook at the local 4 News WHBF TV page or on my page.